Hello and welcome to the Vacanti Yacht Design YouTube channel and on our special website. Today's video will be on using special editing tools for creating chime breaks uh, in a, a, a ProLines 8 hull and uh, we'd like to get right into showing you how to do that. There's a number of different ways for chime breaks and for other special effects inside of ProLines. Right now I'm going to click on the vertex net on and off button just to cycle it here just so you can see what happens. So here you've just seen the hull rendered as stations and water lines and buttock lines. Here you're seeing the same thing but now we have the control points that are used to adjust the surface. Now normally you would just left click on one of these vertex points and pull and uh, change the hull. I'll do an extreme so you can see the difference. and. Uh, uh, but if you wanted, for example, to create a spray strake um, or you wanted to have some other reason for a local chime in a hull that would fare into a smooth hull the rest of the way, uh, I think a quick and easy way to do that is to um, right click on a vertex. Make sure I get it. There we go. And then we'll see the half beam position of that vertex point its height relative to the water line. These are all in inches. And then its distance aft the bow, 248 inches aft the bow. Now, what's important here is in a non-uniform rational B-spline, the weight or the, the effect of that vertex point on the hull shape is controlled by this number. If we set it to a value that is quite high, in this case, so almost 10 times as large, we'll set it to be a 9, and then then uh, click on OK. You're going to see that the hull is pulled very tightly towards that point. I'll zoom in in that view by clicking on here and just looking at the body view for now. And you can see how the hull has been pulled over to that point. Let me zoom in a little bit more and we'll show you this. So you can see as we pull it out, this has this control point now it just has tremendous influence over the hull. And uh, Almost a, uh, almost a break and certainly nearly a hard point in this case. If we continue to change that value uh, and increase it even further and we make it a 20, now you can see that it's even pulling even harder. Now if we stack up a number of these vertices along the same row, so let's click on zoom to zoom back out and uh, we can see that this vertex row is the one two up from the bottom so we go one two on this side so this is where it continues on the back back half of the hull if i right click on this point and then also make this a 20. you can see how hard that gets and then if i right click here again make this also a 20. now Let's turn off the vertex net so we can see this better. You can clearly see that there is darn near a chine break that does fare out finally into a smoother hull shape uh, where the chines, where the vertex control points still had a, a control weight of just one. So you can see it makes uh, quite a bit of an impact and uh, really, really does straighten these lines out and cause them to, uh, to chine. So if we were to say, well, we'd like to have that that hull accentuated in that direction uh, in order to make a bit more of a of a, um, uh, a hull that was capable of planing for example by giving it a little bit flatter bottom we can do that uh, by pulling off these points especially the ones um, that have been altered uh, for a weight much much greater than one I'll take off the uh, vertex net and you can see how we've concentrated that here Perhaps an even better way to view that is to select the hidden surface and to uh, rotate that around. And you can see what used to be a um, smooth round sailboat is turned in darn near to a, to a powerboat and uh, uh, given us a nice uh, a chine, but a round chine uh, in those locales. And then you can see in the aft sections it's smooth. And if we rotate this around so we can see down inside near the bow, um, I'll turn that a little bit differently. Um, then you can see that this is uh, smooth down here as well. So the chine only exists in the region where perhaps you'd like to have the extra stability 
uh, planning capability, whatever. That could have been extended so that the chine break would have existed back here as well. Okay, so uh, let's remove these changes and uh, show you some other ways to go about these things. All I'm doing right now is undoing one step. And as I do these things, all of the, uh, the changes that I implemented have been uh, brought back uh, and taken out of the hull. So now we're back to a smooth hull. Now we have another way to create a true chine break along the entire length of a hull. Longitudinal chine break, we're going to go up here to spline and then make chine break and then horizontal. I'm going to click on one of the rows that I'd like to turn into a chine. Click this one. And uh, it's a little difficult to see what's happened there, but let's uh, turn off the uh, vertex net. And you can see now that the red chine break line exists everywhere where that row of vertices was. So let's uh, accentuate that now so we can see this a little bit more clearly. We'll pull those points out a little more carefully, smooth them out over here a little bit so we have a little bit better looking chine going aft and maybe raise that up a little bit like this. Now let's turn off that vertex row and we can see that the chine has now been implemented. If we go up here and look at our 3D view, again, we see that chine view, but now it's chined all the way aft and all the way up to the bow and uh, is uh, providing that chine capability for us. And you can really see that back here um, and, and the way that that has been implemented. Now back here, because we happen to have a radius turn on this, um, it closed the hull and you can see it pulled it in uh, quite tightly, giving it kind of a bustle in the back. That's something that could be eliminated. Okay, so let's remove that chine and we'll just do a, a back, we'll take out all the editing that we did, and then finally remove the chine break itself. And you can see that things are smooth again. So we'll turn the vertices back on. Now, another way that we could implement all of this is to use the um, edit visual vertex spreadsheet and in this case what we're seeing on the right hand side in this case it's a body view so if I were to look at this in profile we'd see that this is the bow and if I go back to body then clearly it's just sitting on the zero center line we could have added yet another uh, vertex column here very close in that could have made a, uh, a squared off bow or a radius bow there's a lot of things we could have done but for now it's a very simple a closed hull and now if we increment the column that we're looking at as you see down here we're showing display net columns and we increment along you see the hull shape uh, appearing and uh, going along go like this and go all the way down to where we get to the closed in stern uh, let's back up to um, just the first uh, vertex column past the bow you can see here you are at I'm sorry here you are at there, and then here's the bow. So we'll go back out one. So now we have a couple of options. Uh, first, as long as we're here, I want to point out that if I left click and drag one of these points, you'll watch in the left hand side over here, especially this is vertex number one, you'll see these numbers spin uh, as I move this point. So you can see the value that they're achieving as I move that vertex control point around. Uh, the next thing is, is that you also see that when I had right clicked on these points in the normal editing mode, that this uh, vertex weights popped up and I could change them there. Well, we could make um, all of these weights uh, along this uh, body view uh, turn into a chine, which would be a very odd thing uh, going longitudinally. But we could make uh, one of these vertices uh, uh, chine break. This is vertex number two. And you see vertex number two right here. So if we turn this into a 20 and then click OK, then that same stiff control functionality that we had seen earlier is here. As a matter of fact, if I right click on this value again, you can see that the weight has been set to 20. So um, there's several different ways to do your editing and to achieve values that you need. Uh, if you have to have exact values uh, for a, on a center line, or if you want to make sure that the uh, hull has been uh, closed properly along center, then the, really the great way to go about this is the visual vertex spreadsheet, which you can see right here. So um, there's quite a bit of capability. We could have also selected a display net rows 
This is along the uh, fair body or down at the bottom of the hull. And as we increment along, we're going to rise up along the hull until we get to the shear. So this is the shear. No point doing any chines along that thing. But we could have, for example, right near the waterline right there, decided that we wanted to make that entire row a chine by setting um, the weights. Now we still have a 20 that's left over here uh, in, in the, the uh, vertex number one position here. So we'll go ahead and we'll add 20s to the rest of these. And you notice that in this drawing on the right hand side, uh, this is only the vertex not lines uh, values that are being shown one at a time so that you can edit them and understand them clearly. If we now click OK, we'll go back and see the effect on the hull. And you can see right away that that row has been changed and the uh, chine that it's causing. So let's turn off the net for just a moment. Sure enough, there's that, there's the breaks that we've implemented. If we turn this back on and now start dragging this to really accentuate the effect and, and see see the uh, uh, changes that we made, then uh, we can really see um, uh, what we've created here. So let's uh, go into the um, perspective mode and you can see um, the impact of those uh, values that we changed uh, on the hull. You can also see that, uh, especially if we move the hull up here like this, that it becomes quite smooth here where we didn't change um, the, the vertex net values uh, but we did back here and that made them quite stiff. So here we have quite a bit of variation and um, Clearly there's some oddities that are happening here, but it makes the point of the kind of control you have over the system So if we go back into the edit visual vertex spreadsheet, we can go here and make this a one Then we can go to the next column and make this one a one Next column, excuse me, there it is, make that, make that a, a one. And then on number three, same thing, make it a one. As we march down, make this a one, make this a one. And the last one in the hole at the stern, we'll close that up and make that a one as well. Now when we close this, um, we just have the oddity that we created with uh, moving the mouse, moving the vertices around, and the chine that was in the hull has disappeared. Let's verify that by going up here, and you can see that. Okay, so um, you can see the uh, the impact of being able to edit and uh, control using vertex weights um, on a B-spline surface, and uh, being able to create uh, special effects in the hull. Uh, the other thing that we didn't show, and just for the sake of completeness, I will right click here and instead of setting this value to 1, I'll set it to 0 0.01, click OK, and you can see that the hull pulls away from that control vertex. So the value of the weight as it goes smaller reduces its effect on the hull, and as you increase the value of the weight right here, that increases the effect of the vertex on the hull. So we'll put this back to a one for the sake of completeness. There we go. Thank you very much and I hope you've enjoyed this new session of editing with chine breaks and special controls in ProLine.